Hi everyone and welcome to another video by BioTeach London. This time I'm focusing on one of the required practicals for A-level biology, practical 6, which looks at aseptic techniques and the effect of antimicrobial substances on microbial growth, specifically E. coli. Please make sure that you subscribe to my channel for more content like this and give us a follow on Instagram as well. This particular video will be useful for all A-level biologists as well as the BTEC Applied Science students who are studying Unit 3 and potentially Unit 6. So for this practical, there are two parts which develop distinct aspects of your skills. Part A is the development and the evidencing of really safe and effective practice in working with microbes. And what you're doing here is you're comparing the effects of different antimicrobial substances on the growth of bacteria on a lawn plate culture. Part B looks at measuring the effects of antimicrobial substances on the growth of bacterial populations, and that's a fully quantitative method. This particular part will allow you to develop your serial dilution techniques, enable you to grow bacteria at very low concentrations in terms of the bacterial cultures, and you should be able to make this with good precision as well. This will allow you to count the bacterial colonies easily and then do the calculations that could potentially come up in an exam. So the idea for part A is to really prepare a lawn culture, something that might look a little bit like this. This is a diagram of a Petri dish with filter paper discs containing antibiotics. You might wet the filter paper discs with a range of chemicals or use different concentrations of, of the same chemical and you will use the aseptic technique to prepare a bacterial lawn culture. You will place the filter paper or the antibiotic discs on the lawn culture and then you'll incubate those plates. And in the end, what you'll measure is a zone of inhibition. This is a zone that comes up that's clear, basically where the bacteria around the disc may or may not have grown. And the bigger the zone of inhibition, the more effective that chemical solution is. So it's really quite important to understand that there's a little bit of maths involved. There is a semi-quantitative method over here, and there are really quite a large range of health and safety aspects that you need to consider. The other way that you might also complete part A is by using mast rings with different antibiotics placed on them. So a mast ring is essentially, imagine like a piece of card that's round with all these discs around it, usually around eight discs, and they contain different antibiotics. So when you prepare your lawn culture, you will place your mast ring onto the lawn culture, you will incubate that and therefore be able to see whether there's any zones of inhibition on that plate. So we should talk about the methodology first and how you're going to prepare the lawn plate cultures. So first of all, you're going to have a Bunsen burner. You need to make sure you light it and put it on the edge of a heat proof mat very close to it. Keep it on the yellow flame for now. You may have a disinfected plastic sheet that you work on on the work surface right in front of your Bunsen burner. You will also have a broth culture, which will be in a bottle usually. You will have a spreader, which is that blue thing that you see, and you will have a pasta pipette, and you will place that in next to the Bunsen burner as well. You will be given a Petri dish, and at the bottom of the Petri dish, you need to write down your name, your date, and the name of the bacteria that you're growing. Like I said, it's usually E. coli. So you'll put that on the underside of the Petri dish and you will also divide the Petri dish into sections and you may want to write the name of the antimicrobial for each of the tests in that section. This will be something that your teachers will guide you to do. If you're using a mast ring, we normally don't have to divide these in sections, but if you are using filter paper discs, then you will divide them up like this. So you will change the air hole on your Bunsen burner so that it's got a blue flame and your workspace will be set up a bit like this with the heat mat and the Petri dish right next to your Bunsen. You will ensure that you wash your hands thoroughly and dry your hands before starting the actual aseptic technique. Now you'll be given a sterile one centimeter cubed pipette and you're going to hold it very close to the Bunsen flame but you're not actually going to flame it because usually these pipettes are plastic and it's going to melt so you hold it close to but not on the flame itself. 
With one hand, you remove the lid of that McCartney bottle that you see without putting the lid down and you move the neck of the bottle quickly through the Bunsen flame. And this basically stops any microbes from the air entering into your McCartney bottle. You will squeeze the teat of the pipette into the McCartney bottle and you'll place it into the broth culture. And when you release that squeeze, you will remove a small volume of culture from the bottle. You will again flame the neck of the bottle and replace the lid. Once you have got your pipette that's filled up with around, probably around 0.3 to 0.5 centimetres cubed of the broth culture, you will ensure that you can lift the lid of your Petri dish, not completely, just almost three quarters of the way or so, half to three quarters, and you will basically decant the contents of the pipette into the agar plate. And you will do that right next to the Bunsen. You will use your dominant hand to ensure that you squeeze the teat of the pipette around two to three drops maybe, or perhaps the entire content if your teacher uh, directs you to do that. And you will use your um, non-dominant hand just to lift up the agar plate lid, right, like I said, about half to three quarters only. Once the contents of the pipette have been emptied onto the Petri dish, you would close the lid of the Petri dish and immediately place the pipette into a discard pot or some form of disinfectant. This sterile spreader that you were provided with earlier, you may need to unwrap it if it's already in its plastic wrapping, and you will take your dominant hand and by facing the Bunsen, you will basically lift the lid of your agar plate with your non-dominant hand, and you'll use the spreader to basically spread the culture around on your plate. So this is a zoomed in version of the bacterial solutions on the Petri dish there. And you're going to use that just to move it around the entire surface of that agar that's in that dish. And you have to do this pretty lightly. Remember, agar is very, very um, fragile. So if you press down too hard, you will break the agar surface. And that's not what you want to do. That will make it very difficult for you to actually grow the bacteria on that lawn culture. So the agar needs to remain smooth on the surface. So you do this very, very gently. Once you have spread it adequately, you will replace the lid of the Petri dish and you'll leave the lawn plate for around five to 10 minutes. This allows the broth that you put on there to be absorbed onto the surface of the nutrient agar. And after the um, rest period has completed, so about five to 10 minutes, you will then place filter paper discs containing your antimicrobial substances on the plate. So for this, I've just shown you kind of what your placement might be of the filter paper discs um, that contain these antimicrobial substances. You would use forceps to dip the filter paper discs into a test solution so that the disc is wet. Just shake it off so there's no uh, excess moisture on those um, filter paper discs and then place them gently onto your lawn plate culture. You may wish to measure smaller volumes of solutions onto the disc, so you might use a pipette to pipette it onto the disc rather than dipping it on, as an example. Once your um, disc is placed on the bacterial lawn plate culture in the appropriate section, you would just make sure you've flattened it properly and then you can replace the lid. Another alternative is obviously using the mast rings. So these are one continuous section of a ring with these discs around the edges. And the idea is that you basically just place it on your lawn plate and you carefully flatten it using the tip of your um, forceps and just make sure that the surfaces are touching the agar. Once you have done either the filter paper discs or the mast rings, you need to make sure that the lid is secure on the Petri dish. We usually do this, but just by using sellotape on the edges and you just put two pieces of tape on opposite ends of the Petri dish. We also then incubate this plate at around 25 to 30 degrees for 24 to 72 hours and make sure when you put them on the incubator you place them upside down because what happens is you may have condensation that takes place and um, that condensation if it's the right way round you don't want that to drip onto your agar because that could affect your results so by putting them upside down you're eliminating any dripping of condensation that's taking place.
So after 24 to 72 hours, you may have a plate that looks like either one of these. Those gray circles that you see around the discs or around the ma mastering basically represent the zone of inhibition. And the zone of inhibition will basically indicate the potency of each of the chemicals that you've used or the concentrations that you've used. The idea here is to make sure that you use a ruler to measure the diameter of the zones of inhibition. So you would literally just go from edge to edge and then you would calculate the area of the zone using the pi r squared method or you can use 3.14 as pi and the idea is that the larger the zone of inhibition the more effective that particular antimicrobial or antibiotic is and you would probably log that onto a table to show the efficacy of each of the chemicals that you've used. The second part of the practical is actually looking at measuring the effects of antimicrobial substances on the growth of bacterial populations, and this is a fully quantitative method. In this part of the practical, there's two steps. You're going to make some serial dilutions to begin with, and these are serial dilutions of the broth culture that your teacher or technician will provide for you. And then the second part is to use those dilutions to make lawn plate cultures as we did in part A. After that, once you've grown your lawn plate cultures, you would use quantitative techniques to determine the number of bacteria that were in the first part of your solution. So there is a little bit of maths involved in this. You will basically use that aseptic technique, do your serial dilutions, incubate the plates, and then count the number of colonies. The idea behind this is that each colony has been formed from a single bacterium that's divided by binary fission. The number of colonies is the same as the number of bacteria that were inoculated onto the surface of the agar. So you're going to count the colonies on the plate and then you can calculate the density of the bacterial population in the culture. And usually this is worth around two to three marks in an exam because usually you would get questions like this in the exam. So the first thing I want to talk about is really looking at serial dilutions. The McCartney bottle will usually contain E. coli, like I said, and that's your broth culture. You'll be given around five test tubes each. It doesn't matter whether you're working in pairs, but you will be preparing five different dilutions. So for a serial dilution, the first thing we need to do is transfer one centimetres cubed of the broth culture into one of the test tubes. And then what we do to make that up to a one in 10 concentration, we would top it up with nine centimetres cubed of water. And that gives you a one in 10. Once that's mixed up adequately, you would take one centimetres from the one in 10 dilution and put it into a second test tube. This then can get topped up with nine centimetres cubed of water and that will give you a one in a hundred dilution. For the next one, we want to make one in a thousand dilution. So again, we take one centimetre cubed from the one in a hundred dilution. We top that up with nine centimetres cubed of water and that gives us one in a thousand. And as we continue to repeat this, it gives us the other dilution. So the next one along will be one in ten thousand and the next one along will be one in a hundred thousand. And that's pretty much the, the most serial dilution that we're going to do. So you go all the way from one in ten, you use the one in ten, to make your one in a hundred, you use your one in a hundred to make the one in a thousand and so on and so forth until you've made five dilutions from one in ten to one in a hundred thousand. I've only used these colours to show you that each step becomes more diluted. The colour of your solution is usually a, a kind of pale yellow and you might not be able to visually see the difference when you're looking at your test tubes but I'm just showing you this in terms of colour so you can picture it a little bit more. So the, this particular part of the method is exactly the same as part A, where you've got your lawn plate culture, you will ensure that you label it on the underside, and you make sure that you have decanted enough bacterial solution onto your plate, and then you use your spreader to spread it around. And you will do this for every single dilution that you've made. Each of those plates will need to be incubated at 25 to 30 degrees for 24 to 72 hours. And you will ensure that you've used all the key health and safety measures that we talked about in part A.
So once you've incubated your plates and you remove them around 72 hours after, you might have plates that look a little bit like this. Now, these are two examples that I've actually taken from the AQA practical handbooks. Now, the first one, that's the one that's on the left hand side, is the one in 100 dilution. You can see all those kind of brownish dots. Those are the bacterial colonies. And if I asked you to count those as your teacher, you'd probably say that that was too difficult to count. There's far too many of them. And lots of them are in uh, uh, they're very spread out so it's going to be very difficult to count all of those colonies on that plate in comparison if you look at the one on the right this is the one in a thousand dilution these are easy enough to count all the colonies are generally very spread out they're discrete colonies or we say that they're isolated from each other so you can easily count those just by looking at the plate and counting them you might be thinking why am i bothering to count the number of colonies on this plate now on these plates you have to choose one that has around 20 to 100 colonies that have grown. The point of counting these colonies is to be able to calculate something known as population density. Population density is basically you being able to calculate the number of bacteria in each centimeters cubed of the original, the undiluted broth culture that was incubated. So the ability to go, oh, if I've spotted out 0.5 centimeters cubed of the undiluted culture and I've grown 10 Connollys, then I should know how many bacteria were present in one centimeter cubed of the original culture. So I just want to bring your focus on to, I'm going to just look at the second example here just to save you, save you guys a little bit of time really. The volume that's added to the plate on this plate was 0.5 millimeters cubed. The number of colonies that were counted by the student were 46 and the dilution that they used was 1 in 10. So what we're saying here is that if 0.5 millimeters cubed grew 46 colonies, one millimeter cubed would grow 46 divided by 0.5, which should give you around 92. So we're saying if one millimeter cubed have 92 colonies, then one centimeter must have 92 times a thousand. One millimeter cubed is a thousand times smaller than one centimeter cubed. So if we multiply that by a thousand, you get 92,000. Our dilution in this particular example is one in 10. You simply multiply the 92,000 by 10 to get 9.2 times 10 to the 5. That red answer there shows you the number of bacteria that were present in the original undiluted sample or giving you the population density. So I've got some practice questions here for you. Pause the video and have a go at doing the calculations for these examples that I've literally just made up. Do your working out and then you can unpause to see what the answers are. Okay, so going through the first example, we've got 0.67 millimeters cubed that were added to the plate. You had 74 colonies counted and the dilution was one in a thousand. So for this particular example, I'm saying that for 0.67, there were 72 colonies. That means for one millimeter cubed, I would have 74 divided by 0.67, which gives me around 110. If one millimeter cubed had 110 colonies, then one centimeter cubed has 110 times 1,000. And that gives you 110,448. It's because the 110 was um, rounded down, by the way. So just be careful about your rounding of numbers. The dilution in this particular example is 1 in 1,000, so I would simply take 110,448, multiply that by 1,000, and that gives me 1 1.1 times 10 to the 8, and that's the answer for that first one. For the second one, we've got 0.75 millimetres cubed that are added to the plate. You've got the number of colonies that counted as 150, and you've used a 1 in 10 dilution. So for the working out for this, we would say 0.5 had 150, then 1 had 150 divided by 0.75, and so that gives me 200. If 1 millimetre cubed had 200 colonies, then 1 centimetre has 200 times 1,000 and that gives me 200,000, and the dilution is 1 in 10, so I simply do 200,000 times 10, and that gives me 2 times 10 to the 6. Finally, you've had 1 millimetre cubed added to the plate, and you've got 379 colonies, and the dilution that you've used is 1 in 10,000. So 1 millimetre cubed equals 379. That 1 centimetre cubed has 379 times 1,000. And that gives you 379,000. If your dilution is 1 in 10,000, then you simply need to do 379,000 times 10,000. And that will give you 3.79 times 10 to the 9.
So I hope that's been super useful for you in terms of understanding what required practical sex is about and using aseptic techniques. If you have any questions or if there's any confusion about any of it, please make sure you leave me a comment underneath this video and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. In the description of this video, you have got some extra worksheets and things that you can do. In fact, the questions that are a part of this PowerPoint are downloadable as a worksheet from my test shop. So you will just click the link and it will take you to the test shop and you should be able to download them for free. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure that you subscribe to my channel for more content like this and please spread the word amongst your friends and your colleagues. Thank you. Bye for now.